the factors that can influence the elasticity of demand for labour. Previously in the course, we've looked and studied the uh, price elasticity of demand as a concept. Now, that concept simply measures the responsiveness of demand to a change in the price level. Here it's very, very similar indeed. The elasticity of demand for labour simply measures the responsiveness of demand to a change in the wage rate. Okay, so we can see our definition here within that. And to calculate this, uh, this elasticity of demand for labour, all we simply do is take the percentage change in the quantity demanded and divide that by the percentage change in the wage rate, okay, or the price of labour. Now just remember we've seen that there is an inverse relationship between price or the wage rate and the quantity demanded. So that means if the wage increases, the quantity demanded will decrease, of course, and vice versa. So there's always a negative relationship there. Okay, so that's important to note. I've put down a couple of examples here of demand curves for labour, which correspond to being either price uh, or wage sensitive, okay, or wage insensitive, so elastic versus inelastic demand curves. So with this first instance, we can see that a small change in the wage rate from W1 to W2 would generate a big expansion in the actual workforce employed in that sector. Okay, so we can see that sensitivity there. In this instance, we can see that a big increase in the actual wage rate here from W1 to W2 would actually barely change the actual level of employment in the industry. Okay, from E1 to E2, so only a small, tiny proportion there. Uh, so, what factors govern these changes and, and why some uh, labourers face demand curve which is relatively elastic and other labourers face a uh, demand curve which is far more inelastic? Let's take a look then. First point I've noted down here is uh, really about the ease of which uh, you can substitute labour for capital. Okay, so the ease of substitutability of labour for capital. So if you can easily substitute labour for capital goods, well, why wouldn't you? Uh, in the longer term, they're going to be far more cost effective um, and ensure that you can actually increase productivity in most circumstances as well. The uh, example we've referred to before has been about supermarkets, of course, and checkout assistance. Yes, there are a need for a certain number of checkout assistants, but at the same time, there's also a convenience element in having self-service tills where employees are no longer actually required. So after that capital investment is conducted, then the labor is no longer actually required to staff those areas. Okay, so that's, that's an important point, but there are some jobs, of course, that cannot be easily substituted. Uh, for capital goods. Take for instance perhaps a wedding cake designer uh, or a wedding dress designer. Some sort of uh, instances like that where we also see perhaps tailored suits with a particular style uh, and fashion designers. Of course there we have people who have very unique creative skills uh, and creative skills are, are not terribly uh, easily substituted for. Okay, so that's a crucial first point. The price elasticity of demand for the final product is our next one, uh, and that is that if there is an inelastic demand for the final good because it's very well branded, because it's relatively unique and highly differentiated, then it may well mean that you can actually increase the price of that good and pass on any wage costs, any changes in uh, or increases in the wage level, you can pass those costs on easily to your consumers knowing that because you have some unique differentiating aspects uh, and non-price competition in essence, that you're able to do so without too much of a ramic ramification to the actual quantity demanded. Okay, so if you've got a highly differentiated product, uh, then you can pass on additional wage costs quite easily. Our next point, okay, is that wage costs are a percentage of total costs. So with firms that have uh, a lot of wage costs, 
and perhaps relatively small margins, they will seek to actually uh, try to reduce their staff levels. Take for instance Audi and uh, Lidl there where you've got staffing levels which are very, very low and they're deliberately low so that it actually keeps their wage costs very low and enables them to operate at very, very low costs. Uh, the alternative is to have far more staff available and of course that percentage of the actual total cost would rise. Okay, So you've got to be careful here and try to manage this very carefully. Amazon with their new stores that they've been launching in America have of course been introducing these stores with no checkout assistance whatsoever. Okay, really trying to reduce those uh, those uh, labour costs as they possibly can, as far as they possibly can. Our final point there is about the time period. Um, I read today an article on uh, how Levi Strauss are now, well, are now over the next two years going to be implementing uh, a strategy where they design their uh, and fade their jeans with lasers as opposed to staff and employees doing this and they expect that to be normal operating procedure by 2020. Okay so while the demand for their staff may be relatively inelastic perhaps in the shorter term, in the longer term you could see that the actual degree of elasticity would uh, change uh, and it would become far more wage sensitive and the reason is because they are looking to substitute towards those capital goods and over a longer time periods certain jobs are certainly threatened by the rise of artificial intelligence uh, and robotics and so on. Such jobs uh, interestingly include areas such as uh, the law, law firms uh, and barrister roles as well as um, also doctors, interestingly, and radiologists. Okay, so there's a number of uh, jobs which do th uh, face a bit of a threat when it comes to automation. Yet again, however, those jobs that are going to be least uh, affected by the rise of artificial intelligence and so on are going to be those creative sectors. Okay, so some interesting stuff there. All right, hope that was useful. Thanks, guys.